Ah, we're going to move along. Okay, here's a guy who comes from Boston, the city of culture. Ah, Boston is here, too. I've given us such great people in Boston. People like Paul Revere, John Hancock, the Boston Strangler, <laughs> and Lenny Clark. Let's make him happy. Okay, Lenny, here we are, baby. All right. Rodney Dangerfield. Let him know. Is he great? The big terrific. John, all right. Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, thank you very, very much. How's everyone doing? Y'all have a good day? Yeah, my day sucked too. It's okay. I'm not like a lot of these guys you see on TV. Hi, hello, how are you? What a nice looking crowd. Funny thing happened to me today. Nothing fucking funny happened to me today. I'm lying in bed around 7 o'clock this morning. I get in around 6.55, so I'm fighting for sleep. Uh, wife comes bouncing into the bed, says, Come on, Lenny, it's nice out. Let's go out and play, because she likes that. She's young. She's 15. <laughs> well, in a couple of months. But I said, Honey... I said, I don't want to play. She said, what do you want to do? I said, why don't we have a couple of beers and watch some cartoons on TV? You're going to drink in the morning? I hate you when you drink. I said, good, because I hate you when I'm not drinking. <laughs> this marriage, marriage is a lot of work, folks. I had no idea. I've been married about three years now. You know what I mean? I, I thought it was going to be simple, like, I'm home, dear. Assume the position. Oh! No, no, no. Oh. There's a lot more to marriage than that, isn't there? There's loving and caring and hugging and lying and... <laughs> Oh, good God. I'm, you know, hey, I'm glad. Because I, I married a woman. Did I tell you that right up front? I want to joke. Because I love women. Women are probably the number one reason why I'm not a homosexual today. Okay, I blew one guy, but I needed a ride real bad. Ah, oh, you're great. I'm kidding you. I'm teasing you, folks. I didn't need the ride. See, the thing is... Oh, I couldn't be a homo if I wanted to because of my religion. You see, I'm a Catholic. Any Catholics here? Oh, great. Anybody used to be Catholic? Yeah! <laughs> See, growing up as a Catholic was not that much fun for me. I didn't have that kind of fun. We didn't get to smoke. We didn't get to have sex. See, I was a victim of child abuse, folks. That's right. I did nine years in a Catholic grammar school with nuns. For those of you who don't know what nuns are, nuns were fat little broads who never get laid, so they dress up like penguins and beat the piss out of kids like me. <laughs> oh. See, I, I, they, they taught me how to pray, and pray I do every time I fly. Because I hate to fly, ladies and gentlemen, I really do. Not because of plane crashes, don't get me wrong, I'm not a wimpy type guy. Plane crashes don't scare me for three very good reasons. I drink, I owe money, and I'm married. <laughs> I go down in a plane crash, I'm up about three million bucks, and I'm going to have the best nap I've ever wanted in my life. <laughs> what scares me are these Shiite Muslim terrorist bastards. Any of them in here tonight? <laughs> they must all live at the airport. I mean, now look, Abdul, here's one with keys, come on. Now, this is a funny thing. These guys, these terrorist guys, they steal a plane worth millions of dollars. I can understand it. Then they blow it up, and they blame it on their religion. Now, who is this guy, Allah, and what has he got against airplanes? I mean, Jesus Christ was nailed to a cross. I don't flip out every time I get near wood. Come on, what's the connection? Oh. Oh. America, we don't take it from anybody, because look what happened. In this year, earlier in this year, Iraq. Any Iraqians in here? Now, they're never around when you need those little towel-headed bastards, rug stitching. Well, I shouldn't get carried away, but you know... Iraq, Iraq is smaller than Rhode Island, you know. And they, what they did was they had the audacity to blow up an American ship and kill 37 sailors, and we did nothing. They said, well, it was a mistake. Oh, well, don't worry about it. Hey, this was one time when I wanted to see Reagan just snap, go over there, nuke Iraq, then get on TV, go, Iraq. I thought it was Iran. Iraq, Iran, hey, I'm only up by one letter. Cut me some slack. I'm an old guy. You gotta look at it like this. If we went to war tomorrow, name a country that would help us. See, there isn't any. All these countries hate us. Canada, you'd think Canada would help us. Canada hates us. They just make believe they like us, so we let them go to Atlantic City. <laughs> Canada? A tough country? Canada? What was the last war Canada was in? Come on. On a good day, our Salvation Army could kick their ass. Yeah, throw some towels at them. Yeah, get a blender for that big bastard. Yeah. Mexico? How's Mexico gonna help? They're already here! <laughs> now, there is one more that I want to mention to you before I leave. And that's the war on drunk driving, folks. A war that we are losing. Don't drink and drive. Don't drink and drive. Don't drink and drive. How the hell are we gonna get anyplace? How are we gonna get home? 
How many like me? How many need a drink in order to drive because your nervous wreck's worried about some drunk smashing into your car? folks like me, you're in your car, you may, be, you may be having a drink, you may be having a smoke, you may be having sex, you're trying to keep your mind on what you're doing. You see the cops in the rear view mirror, you're watching them smash right into a truck in front of you. She's going for dental work, you're looking for a job in a carnival, the dickless man, come on out. Hey, I've been Lenny Clark, if you like me, tell your friends, your friends like me, get some new friends.